goes first, and I'm going to kind of give you an abbreviated type of review on this one. This is actually the, the this comes from what we use to assign points. Number 10, the word six points. This tells you where the six points came from. And it was just like from first one. Uh, it says solve by factoring completely. So you get the first three points from all the factors. You get the last three points from the solution. Actually, anyway, I, I, I Well, anyway, uh, the first three points come from the factors, the last three points from the solution. So, uh, let's go through the steps. Though. What's the first? If, if, uh, if this is the um, equation over here, it's already equal to zero, which is good because if we're going to solve by factor, we want to equal zero. Uh, what's the first step? Very strong factor. That's what I've made mistakes already. Based on the factor is not 3, it's not just x, it's 3x. The DCF is 3x. So you pull out the 3x, which is up with it, 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. So if you were to do a table, which I'm about to do, and then at the a will be 2, the b will be negative 7, and the c will be negative 4. So I'm looking for two numbers that both try to give you negative 8 and add up to negative 7. Because the only combos make the bigger one the negative, because the seven is negative. And the negative up here means to change the sign, so this has to be one plus. What I want is a negative, a positive one is negative eight. So the trick I showed you then, you can write the three x and then do a a which is two, so write two x plus one. And, and I did find that there's one that here that needs to be two x. Some of the old times. This one has a common factor of 2, so you can divide by 2. So that leaves you here. Your three factors are 3x, the 2x plus 1, and then once you divide 2x minus 8 by 2, you get x minus 4. Then you're supposed to set each factor equal to 0. This is what I'm going to do. Maybe it's not my favorite type of problem because it's, you know, it's, yeah, theoretically you can talk this, you know, you can talk the theory behind it, but um, it's not something you see that much. Normally with a quadratic equation, if the equation was quadratic, you would have two solutions. But this equation is not quadratic. What's the biggest of uh, x1 at the beginning? Three. So you could have three solutions. And you see now what you did know is that you're supposed to set each factor equal to zero. How many factors do we have? Three. Do all three of them have a um, have a uh, variable? Yeah, so you're supposed to make each one equal to zero. You're supposed to say uh, two zero. Uh, excuse me, it's 3x equals 0, 2x plus 1 equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0, so three solutions, and that's when you end up with x equals 0, x equals negative 4 times. You know, the, the point for a sign, you see how many points you got, the point for the sign at the end, is you get um, each factor for as many, and then each factor. Contrary to popular belief, I'm human. And, and sometimes when I start, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of all these like, you know, degrees of points and oh, it's one point for this and one point for that. You know, I've always been a beautiful thing about math is black and white. It's uh, very objective, right? And, all. and I can find a hundred points and maybe like maybe half credit or something, but you know, anytime that you have to assign all these points to these little milestones, mistakes can happen. Alright? I've made a lot of mistakes, but it's possible. If you feel I made a mistake in, in counting those points, that's why I have to this. And it's going to be perfect. Uh, and again, you know where to find me. On the first quiz, there was a couple kids where uh, I went back and looked at it and I gave you that points. Uh, I don't know if it was the other way around. Yeah, awesome. Alright, the next one, the quadratic formula. This one's a little more straightforward. I'd say if I was a black man, I was going to say that number 10 was the worst, then 11 and 12, so let's see if I'm right. 
The first point we got was for substitution. Did you plug in the numbers correctly? Looking for signs here. Remember that A is 4, B is uh, 16, and C is negative 3. So the first time we plug in the B, it has to be the basic sign. Okay, then notice how no point was given during the evaluation of the discriminant. But once you have the discriminant, if you show a discriminant of 3 or 4, that's your second point. You got, you got a point for getting a discriminant of 3 or 4. The next point, since 304 is not positive nor perfect, uh, sorry, it's not prime um, uh, or perfect, then that means it could be simplified with a tree. I'll go ahead and do that here on the side as soon as anything is possible. If I divide by 2, that's 152. If I divide by 2, that's 76. If I divide by 2, that's 38. 2 again is 19. So I can bring out two sets of 2. What's 2 times 2? 4. What's left behind is 19. Even if your tree doesn't look, if nobody's tree was graded, like if your tree looks different than my tree, fine, but you have to get four square root of 19. Then the last point came from reducing. If we look at the outside numbers, uh, negative 16, 4, and 8, what can they all be divided by? They can all be divided by 4. If you did so, if you divided each one by 4, then this is what your solution looked like. That was fine. And I think I did a pretty good job of preparing you for this because the solution goes more than one way. If you went ahead and divided the eight, regardless if you did, if you pressed this, if you divided each term by eight, then that's what it looks like. And either one of those will suffice for the last one. Because it's just uh, informally from whatever, from my recollection, it's a very common score here was two. People got to the, the correct discriminant, but after that, it came up with Then the last one, which is uh, completing the square, you have to solve completing the square. A lot of people, maybe, maybe this was lower than number 11 because I, I think a lot of people only got this first point, where they moved the constant over to the other side by subtracting. That's where they got this from. The way they get this for here, that's the next point, is by actually completing the square. I taught you b squared um, over 4a, so that's 4 squared divided by 4 times 1, which is 16 divided by 4, which is 4. Okay? But then you also have to add that to the other side. Then the next point comes from factoring the perfect squared trinomial correctly and combining the negative 15 and the 4 randy to get negative 11. Then the next step is square root property. That's your fourth point. Square root property will get rid of the square. That's where this uh, square root shows up. Why else is very important there? That the obvious one right here. What else do you see there? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Thank you. That, that was the obvious one here. Uh, the plus or minus is there. And then finally, the last step is just um, there's a combination of both bringing out the i and only to subtract the negative two again. This is straight from what I got. This was my key that I used for grading. You can see how you would grade. Any questions there? I can look over the other ones I already went over there. Uh, I got number three. Go with the number three. Okay. Which of the following is it? Uh, so this one was like, uh, and this one I think was number two one. It was one of the uh, three responses. So the difference here is that we have a fourth power. You didn't do a lot of these in class, but we did a couple. So you can do your factor chart with your ABC, but this is an adjustment that you have to make. Can we do this one without doing the chart? Can we take the two numbers and multiply to give us negative 18 and add up to negative 7? Negative 9 and positive 2. But the difference here, in order to account for the fourth power, is instead of putting an X in front, Put an x squared in front. But it's all that's just fully factored. The square part you found all teachers. Because if you didn't fully factor, right now I'll answer any questions. Uh, 
In my estimation, between nine and possibly uh, seven, those two are the easiest ones. Yeah. Easy is a relative work, what's easy for me is not, not easy for you, but vice versa. But in my opinion, the easiest ones, if I were to use that terminology, there have been seven and nine because they both deal with the same thing, which is the description. The only thing you have to know, and actually for seven, you don't even need to do it, you're looking at a picture. And they were looking at that too. Uh, but for here, I have to, it has to be equal to zero, but the other already been done for me. So how would I need to die? I don't want to actually solve that equation, so die. Negative 8 squared minus 4 times 16 times 1. And then 64 times 4 is 0. When you have a zero discriminant, what does it mean? Get to the notes. 1 real 0. <laughs> What does zero be the same as? Are 
I printed out a copy for you of the ones that were missed the most from yesterday's practice test. Now, these questions were not numbered. That's for security purposes. I never give these numbers, and uh, they're always shuffled. So it's not like I can say, oh, this is number one, number two, number three. But if you go do the retake, these are the same ones you'll see. These are the ones that were missed the most. First one, factor completely. What should, I, um, what should I do first? Yeah, there's a 2 for uh, GCS, so that's X squared minus 16. Not that I advise you to do this like in real time, but if you are doing this in real time, bam, I know two the factors. How do I factor the X squared minus 16? The second time today. Separate the squares, thank you. a shortcut. No, this is not an equivalent expression to what we started with. This is kind of where we're taking a shortcut that shows that only works if you factor out your reducing. I can't do anything with 3x plus 4, but this can be divided by 3, which gives me um, x, what is it, x minus 2? Okay. So now you can go check this for 4, x minus 2, Okay. 
first step here in factoring for Wiggy. Uh, PCF of 5. That should be interest of time, because I want to take it as many as possible. By bringing out that 5, I have a 1 in the front. Like, eventually, if you're not there yet, you should pick the number to 2, and number 1 in front, you should be able to do this in your head. And you pick up two numbers that multiply to give you 6 and add up to negative 7. So five times one is four. Yeah, so I did it in my head, but what I did in my head was I'm looking for two numbers that multiply. If I had one, and see if the other one looks like it was six, I would have been able to say. So the only numbers that multiply with six are one and six and two and three. If the seven is negative, you have to be negative. If the six is positive, then you have to be the same sign. So the only thing could be is negative one and negative two. More factoring. And these are only the ones that were, I think they told them there were 32 problems. Uh, again, for current, so it doesn't matter how many problems there are. But, um, the ones that are in front are the ones that we need the most. Data driven instruction. How can I factor these first? I can bring out two, and then x squared plus three, and then the bar, and see if you can do this one. By bringing out that two, now I have a one in front. So, can you think of two numbers in your head that multiply to give you negative two and have
Questions there? Okay, good. Now let's get to the equations. Here you were not told um, which one to use on the test in the water wheel. It's multiple choice. It's kind of like a computer the same thing. You can do whatever method you want. And there will be three response. On the three response, you have to follow the right. For these, we'll just use whatever we think is best. What do you think? That the, what should you know are the two that I consider to be the best? Like the, the one that I said going forward, we're going to use the most frequently. Factory or quadratic form. And the nice thing about both of those is I don't have to really make a decision yet because they both have the same first step. It's make it equal to zero. So I, I would make it equal to zero first, and then I'll decide what I want to do. So minus k plus 2x. Sadly, I've seen some people that still have trouble that they don't really wrap the concept of standard form. They should have really been emphasized in algebra 1. Because this is often the biggest exponent to the least. Now, as you get to know me, what do you think would be that? What do you, what do you think I would think would be the best way to go here? Factory, sure. Anytime they use one, I'm going to put factory. I'm going to try. Maybe it doesn't work. There's no guarantee that factory works. And if it doesn't, Gabby needs to use the quadratic formula. But uh, let's at least try factory. Can we take those two numbers and multiply it together with negative 8 and add up to positive 2? So I'll give you two more. Positive 4, negative 2, so that's plus 4. Let's do 
It's very equal to zero, but maybe with the two minutes wrong, maybe you're scared of factoring. I would still try to factor this one time. That's the same with quadratic formula, right? That's the people. If p is negative nine, we're going to refer to positive nine. Plus or minus, further or no. Negative nine squared minus four times two times nine over two. How many negatives come out in the square? Chase, so what would what, 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 what I put out in the square? Yeah. So uh, negative nine squared minus four More, a like it has to be there. So people are going to write it. But when you do write it, the fraction bar needs to go uh, underneath the entire right side, not just underneath the square root. It has to go underneath everything. Okay? Is that what you want to do? You don't like fractions? My discriminant is not included. Positive is something I'm going to get to two solutions. It's also perfect, telling me that uh, the solutions are going to be rational. So I got a line plus or minus three over four. Don't try to solve it this way, split it. X equals nine plus three over four. Solution is 12 over four, which is three. X equals nine minus three over four, which is six over four, which gives me three over two. So my two solutions are three over two. If I were to take out that equal zero, what do you do with y? It would be that we graph it. Where would this be? So we can copy our graph. Not how many times I'll copy our graph. Where am I copying it? At three and two. At three and two. What's different about this one? What don't you see there? There's no B. So no settlement of the door to form the property. Or, uh, this is not always the case, but there's a difference of squares. You want to do further property? Oh no! I cannot divide 25 by 16. I have a bunch of minus 
Because I have a perfect square square motion already, and I have a single x, I can use perfect property. I'm just working my way there. x plus 3 squared is equal to 2 uh, t. Now I can use perfect property. Um, x plus 3 is equal to 2 t. Guys, get your own phones. I don't want any phones getting lost. Don't be lazy. <laughs> 